Welcome to a new episode of Smiles in the Air, your oral health and prevention podcast. I'm Salsa da Costa and with me for the second time already, so a new appearance in the second season, we have Dr. Victoria Sampson. Hello. Last time we talked about microbiome and we classify you as a microbiome queen. <laughs> Today we will talk about something else because you have a new challenge in your life, right? Do you want to talk a little bit more about it? Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, it's it's funny doing a podcast about something that I don't normally talk about because I've been doing microbiome testing and all of that That's every the podcast. Thing is pushing a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um so the yeah, the biggest thing that's been happening recently um is I just opened a clinic uh with my family. Um so and it's a dental practice, but obviously there's a lot of microbiome testing and you know, obviously most importantly, we have two GBT lounges um in our clinic as well. Why this challenge of opening the this practice, the health society? Yes. Right. So you even ha are dressed in the same colors as your health society colors, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. We. I mean, I think anyone who's opened their own dental practice um, is probably nodding right now, saying, "Yeah, it's really challenging." I think that the way that we graduate as you know dental professionals is just to 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 care for patients. We never are taught the business side of things, um, and so when we were trying to open this clinic, you know, there were so many things we just didn't know. And um, it's there's no kind of support system. You just need to have the right mentors. You need to have the right connections with the right companies um, and trust a lot of people. So I think that was one thing for us was that it was a, a territory that none of us really knew about and hadn't really been very well prepared for from university. Um, and then the other part was that there are a lot of things, you know, in a dental practice that the dentist does not do. And I used to stroll into work, at, you know, my patients at 9 a.m. I was there like 8.55. I was, I'm not good. Like I would like stroll in, do my work. I would work really hard. Yeah, but that was it, you know, and I left and I didn't get I didn't get to see the background of decon, you know, disinfecting all of the instruments. How much equipment are you actually buying? Who's actually like taking care of all of your equipment and, you know, changing the water lines? Like all of those things are things that are happening on a daily basis that I think sometimes we take for granted and we don't realize until we're opening our own place up. I completely agree. I think uh, we are seen only as a clinicians when we get out of college and then we need to learn all the business parts, mm -hmm. running a team also that mm -hmm. is not easy, um, have all the controversy sometimes with the, with the patients because we need to explain to the patients uh, what is the, the main goal of your practice because you have a main goal with your practice, right? Yeah. So that's why you open it. What yeah. is the main goal? So actually, yeah, I forgot about that as well. So that <laughs> we're putting the mouth back into the body as our kind of dream and idea. And that was probably one of the biggest challenges is not only are we, were we trying to open a dental practice with no previous um, kind of experience of doing it, but we're also opening a health center. It's a, it's the first of its kind. It's basically um, not only where we're practicing dentistry, but we're also um, putting the mouth back into the body using different services. So we have an infrared sauna, we have um, a gym, we do a lot of blood testing. Uh, we work in a multidisciplinary way. So we're working with doctors, nutritionists, functional practitioners. And our idea is that you shouldn't see one person for your mouth and another person for the rest of your body. And if you are fine, but they should be talking to each other. So literally yesterday I was liaising with um, a cardiologist and with a, a doctor for the care of a patient. Um, and that is, I think, what everyone should be doing. So it's been difficult to kind of be the first to do a lot of that, even from a regulatory perspective, because when we were trying to get like our um, our kind of regulation and CQC, uh, and they were like, what is this place? Like, why do you have an infrared sauna? And you've also, you're providing hygiene. Like it's a very, it's difficult for people to wrap their heads around sometimes. You also have a nutritionist working with you. Yes, yes. Why the role of the nutritionist? Well, so... Um, as you know, I love the mouth, the oral microbiome, but the oral microbiome is kind of an extension of the gut microbiome. So if you're not taking into consideration the gut, then you're not really looking at the whole picture. So um, we have a wonderful new dentist, her name's Dr. Khan, and she is not only a dentist, but also a nutritionist. Um, and so the idea is that she can do oral and gut microbiome testing. She can look at everything from, you know, from the top to the bottom of the body and also, and not only do a dental treatment for you, but also look at your nutrition, your lifestyle. Um, you know, we have the personal trainer. It, it's a kind of all encompassing, uh, treatment plan is the idea. 
And um, we are talking about microbiome and how you are uh, trying to change it in the mouth of your patients, but also in the health, over, over health of your patients. We couldn't not talk about guided <laughs> biofilm therapy and you have two full gbt lounges right two yes. rooms completely dedicated to to gbt yes yeah why um so i think with all of the work that we were doing on the microbiome um guided biofilm therapy has been the foundation of all of that um in the sense that it's the number one treatment that we recommend to every single patient of ours whether they have um an imbalanced microbiome so they have high levels of really bad bacteria and maybe they have disease or even if they're healthy and they just need maintenance everyone needs it um so you know that was what you know it really helped we worked with ems it, in terms of when i say we didn't know what equipment we needed it was nice to have uh, ems help and say okay you need xyz number of hand pieces this would help you with this you know all of those types of things actually are really useful um and then for us as well gbt is one of the foundations of the practice because that mm -hmm. is the one thing that people come in most frequently for so our idea is that you come every three to four months for guided biofilm therapy and if you come that regularly you shouldn't even be using the piece on you should just be airflowing and um, just disrupting the biofilm on a regular basis which is in turn going to be helping your microbiome as well yeah i got the privilege to follow this since the beginning right <laughs> i went and uh, was with, with you your mother and your sister yes uh, visiting the location um before before starting to the works yeah. right so I didn't have the chance to go, and I know you already pawned me multiple times <laughs> that I'm not coming to London, but I'm I, I'm waiting for the for the brunch uh, invitation. That's any time. <laughs> <laughs> How is it to work with your with your mother and your sister? Because it's a family business now. Yeah, um, you know what what I said at the beginning about finding people that you trust. I mean, there's no one I trust more than my mother and my sister. Um, obviously, there are some maybe. Um, I don't want to say disadvantages, but struggles with working with your family, which are that I think sometimes you don't have that that barrier and you know or that boundary. So if I am talking to um, someone that I work with, um, there are some things I just wouldn't say, like or you know what I mean. Yeah. There's boundaries. Do you still have like when you have a disagreement with your mother, she sends you to your room. Because maybe you know, <laughs> yeah, go to the GBT lounge. Yeah, go to the GBT room, <laughs> like. <laughs> Like, yeah, it, that's the thing. So we're we're still trying to navigate that relationship. And I think it can be quite difficult to differentiate between, for example, mother-daughter uh, relationship or sister-sister relationship and then colleagues um, yeah. and telling someone maybe that they did something wrong, that, you know, they need to do this better. So, you know, it's a constant evolving challenge. But at the same time, I think it's been really beautiful for patients actually to see. I think yeah. patients love seeing it because it it does change the environment. They they know who they're seeing, like they can see that we all love each other. Um, and I think that's actually one of our biggest selling points is that we are a family run business and yeah, people like that. Yeah, because for, for the audience that doesn't know, your sister is also an orthodontist. Yes, yes, sorry. So yes. this is another thing that you're adding to the practice. And, yes. uh, Talking about biofilm and having a scissor that are placing stuff in the mouth of the patient that will retain the biofilm. <laughs> how is this cooperation? Yeah, so she, um, it, it again works really well because she's adding all of this stuff into the mouth, which is attracting even more biofilm, um, which is even more difficult to, to clean um, and making my job much more difficult because I'm trying to sit there and balance people's microbiomes and make sure that they don't have gum disease. And then my sister comes and just ruins it all. But <laughs> Don't tell her that. <laughs> but then there's this magic wand of GBT, which then helps because uh, it disrupts it. It can remove the biofilm so easily. So whenever she has a... Um, any orthodontic patients, yeah. um, they she actually just works right next to the hygienist, so they're literally um, treating hand patients, hand. yeah, hand on hand. Um, we're trying out some new things as well now. So what we want to start doing is uh, she might start removing. So let's say with orthodontics with braces to remove the wire, they go see the hygienist, so they have yeah. a proper proper hygiene. You know where you're you're going under everywhere. Then they come back and see her, and they replace the wire. Um, and do their adjustment. So we're trialing that at the moment, but regardless, it's it's really, really useful for guided biofilm therapy when you have someone who's adding 
a lot more biofilm into the mouth, yeah. like an orthodontist. <laughs> and how are you like handling, well, we already had this discussion not a little bit off the record here, but how are you handling your schedule? Because you are super busy with lectures and traveling. And now you have a practice that is starting because we open uh, four months and a half that yeah. you open, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's Someone said to me the other day, um, that you know if if you love what you do it shouldn't be work and so yeah. you know i do find that i am working a lot um but at the same time are you really you're always traveling uh, yes i'm always tra- <laughs> but i'm working whilst i'm traveling i actually okay. find my flights and my travel the most effective like times for me i'm so and i just do everything on my flights and my planes and my trains that's where i've got my laptop out and i'm just working yeah. um but no i think it, again it's it's been important to be able to allocate jobs to people. Um, and I am very, very clear with my diary. I also have checklists for everything. I'm one of those checklist people. I have a checklist for my checklist sometimes. I have different checklists in different locations. So the office, um, my house, you know, everywhere. And that's how I kind of stay on top of things and trying to kind of just share out my time in an equal way. Yeah. But- you need to be a little bit obsessive and compulsive to uh, to achieve all 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 the different projects that you are achieving today, right? Are you still doing the research at the yes. same time? Okay, yeah. see, adding another stuff. Are, <laughs> are you still do- DJing? Yes. <laughs> so come on. <laughs> yeah, but you know, someone else said something to me once a couple of weeks ago, and you said pressure is privilege, and that I, really I wonder stuck with it. Yeah, <laughs> and then if anyone cannot see me nodding at salsa right now, that's me nodding at salsa. Um, and I think that has really stuck with me because sometimes I do complain like, oh, I'm so tired. Oh, like I'm feeling overwhelmed. I have so much to do. And then I'm like, this is an awesome place. And, you know, it, firstly, you should take only what you want to do. Yeah. Um, you shouldn't. I think one lesson I've learned recently is to say no. And I used to do a lot of things just because someone asked me to do it. And now I've become a lot more like, like, is is my time kind of not even time is my energy worth it like yeah. i don't you know you've got a finite amount of energy every day and it's like you can't give it to everyone and everything and you need to focus it so you know reallocating that energy is really important yeah but i really believe in what i said like a couple of weeks ago we met the first time in 2019 mm-hmm. on a boat actually <laughs> and um at the time you were just starting yeah uh, but you already had like so many ideas where to go. <laughs> so I think it was a, a good start. And seeing where you are today in, and two weeks ago when we were in Manchester, uh, seeing on stage again, I was proud. I was proud <laughs> of uh, <laughs> what you are trying to do and what you are achieving. So I, I continue to say that. And okay, if you heard me, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> uh, pressure is a privilege, but pressure yeah. is a privilege only for the ones that you deserve them. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. And and honestly, actually, EMS has been a very important part of my journey. And like I said, with the GBT lounges, like it was, I mean, it was a no brainer because of all of the work I do with the microbiome stuff, but also the support of having EMS to, to guide us on, you know, like I said, the equipment, the sterilization, all of that, it, it was such a nice support to have. So I really, yeah, I mean, EMS, you guys, and you, of course, also. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, 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 no. Luck is not, it's not only luck, it's pushed, and you are pushing luck uh, in the right way. So I hope that it continues. I will visit the Health Society. I, so. I promise. <laughs> I, you, on the record, she invited me already a couple of times, yes. but I never found, found the time. And mm-hmm. the last time that I was in UK, I was in Manchester, not in London. So. I know, but next time, London. Yeah, next time. I'm waiting for the brunch. <laughs> okay. It was a really good brunch last time. <laughs> Um, so thank you so much Victoria it's always good to have you here it's always good to know what's happening in your life and the journey that you are uh, getting into that is only the beginning thank you very much yeah I mean it's exciting to see what's happening in the world generally in dentistry and I think anyone who's listening um, dentistry right now is a really exciting place and I think there's so many changes and so much going on that yeah it is it so thank you 
for all the listeners, you heard it here from Victoria. So she is here, but she always finds the time. She has a checklist for her checklist. <laughs> so I do the same thing, obsessive compulsive, always. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can always find time when you when you want to achieve something greater than you. Um, thank you. You saw also the journey in terms of uh, building a practice. It's not that easy. There's a lot of challenge, but everything is achievable, mostly when you have a family backing you, yeah. you up. Yeah. So uh, for the listeners, thank you for uh, listening to us and uh, subscribe the podcast in any platform that you're listening to us. It can be Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, or even YouTube. And don't miss the next ones. Thank you. See you next time.